contending realm of things needs a power hitting first baseman. And there, there's your trade partner. Did you hear about the uh, controversy in Boston? Not that the Red Sox don't have enough problems already. <laughs> but now David Price and Dennis Eckersley are at it again, it looks like, in Boston. Two years ago, David Price set up a meeting to apologize to Dennis Eckersley for yelling at him in front of his teammates on a team flight from Boston to Toronto. Do you remember that story? Eckersley chose not to show up for the meeting and just said he wanted to move on. And so Price, I guess, is hanging on to that. Um, Eckersley was in the Boston Globe. The Nesson analyst uh, discussed the incident. He said, this is this week, okay, this is fresh. I didn't know how to deal with that. Quoting, I don't plan on saying a word to him. I don't plan on seeing him, never. I don't really give a expletive one way or another. I don't think he really cares one way or another, end of quote. So Price talked about it with the media prior to Wednesday night's game against the Blue Jays, and he was asked what offended him about this article. Price quoting now says, the fact that it was two years ago, over two years ago now, the fact that he wanted to move on and since then he's went on the radio and talked about it and he's done it again now. In 2017, I addressed it, told you guys in front of the camera that I wished I would have handled it differently. I did it again in 2018 in spring training on day one, said the same thing. Still quoting Price, we had a meeting set up in 2017 here at the field Got here early, hour and a half, two hours after I get here. They come and tell me that he's not coming. We had a meeting. He backed out. I was going to tell him I apologize and that I didn't handle it the right way. And it continues to come up. There's no reason for it. Honestly, I just think it's trash. <laughs> so how did this resurface? It came up again when Eckersley was calling the game on ESPN and uttered one word, which was yuck to describe a pitching line from Eduardo Rodriguez's minor league rehab assignment. And that night, Price confronted Eckersley in a harsh way as he boarded the team plane. Now, why this is coming up again now, I have no idea. Will it have any effect on the Red Sox? I don't know. They're already nine and a half out in the race. They're also, what was it, uh, three out in the second wild card. But, you know, controversy like this, I mean, come on, David Price. You need to focus on pitching. And come on, David Dennis Eckersley. This happened two years ago, and the kid wanted to apologize to you. So maybe they should both just move on. Uh, maybe They do need to have a meeting, but it needs to not be publicized, right? Just get together like two men, deal with it. You know, people air out. I guess it's the age of social media. You, you, chat rooms like we have. You know, you got to be careful what you say sometimes, right? Um you say something in five minutes is on Facebook or it's on some social media, Instagram or Twitter, and the whole world can know about it. So if you've got a problem here, Dennis Eckersley, David Price, get together as men, get it solved. Red Sox, go play baseball. You're the freaking world champs, okay? Let's do it. Let's talk about some injuries. Mike Trout. Zach Cozart, Jonathan Lucroy, all in the Angels. Trout said he expects to rejoin the lineup on Thursday against the Astros. He has missed three games with a mild right calf strain. Trout met with team doctors on Wednesday to get a better sense of the calf strain. He left the game early on Sunday in the third inning against the Mariners. He did take batting practice for a third straight day, but has yet to test the calf while running. Trout could return as a designated hitter on Thursday against left-hander Wade Miley. And that could give a break to Otani, who has been really hot of late. Cozart has undergone season-ending surgery. And LeCroy had a non-invasive operation to repair his fractured nose on Tuesday. Remember the collision? He was doing better on Wednesday. He suffered the fracture on, with Mar Marisnik on July 7th. And he's expected to miss roughly three more weeks. And Lucroy is a critical piece in that Angels lineup as they look to continue 
Charlie got to walk the dogs. Okay, keep listening. Hey, I, if you get back, Charlie, I'm going to talk. I, I got this 10 o'clock hour. I'm going to go into it. So if you get back, I'll try to catch you up. Thanks for being with us. And, uh, you know, come on back, get the dogs walked, and let's pick up where we are. How about that? Uh, more injuries. Talk about Kenley Jansen. And I told you earlier, he's just not pitching well. He was not available for Wednesday's game against the Phillies. He took a comebacker off his right ankle in the ninth inning Tuesday night. He had a significant limp following the 9-8 walk-off loss at Citizens Bank Park. He said his right ankle was feeling, quote, better, end of quote, prior to Wednesday's game. But manager Dave Roberts did not utilize him and was not going to utilize him, saying that if a save was necessary, Julio Urias, let's talk about him for a moment, or Joe Kelly might get the ball. Now, Julio Urias, to me, is the wild card piece for the Dodgers if they don't make a trade. okay. If they do make a trade for, say, Vasquez, if I'm the Pirates, i got to have Urias. If I don't make the trade and I'm the Dodgers, why can't you start using Urias now in closed situations while there is a good reason to do it? Jansen is hurt. Let Urias save games. Two approaches here. Number one, it should work, okay? So we're going to talk, take the positive route. It should work, number one. So then here's you to a, option A, option B. Option A, the Dodgers just simply keep him as their closer, and he stays there indefinitely. He could do the job. He's that talented. I think he's as talented as Vasquez. Vasquez just has been in the closer situation. But now, here's the other thing. Vasquez has been the closer in Pittsburgh in a non-contending typical situation throughout the last few seasons, whereas L.A. has been in the World Series two years in a row, the big stage. Urias is there. Would the Dodgers benefit more not making the trade for Vasquez, keeping what they have, and shifting Urias to the closer. Beach Bum says use Urias hater style. That could work too. Of course, you know, now hater's the closer, but I get what you're saying. He's that kind of talent. He's only pitching like once a week. I want to, that's what's stymieing me. Now, I know the Dodgers are way out in front. And so maybe they don't feel the need to do that quite yet. But it would just make sense to me to take this kid. Okay, so let's look. He did pitch last night. I'm sorry. He pitched last night two and two-thirds innings. But before that, he pitched on the 13th, four-day break. Before that, a six-day break. But look at these numbers. Since June 20th, I'm going to give you innings pitched. I'm going to give you earned runs, strikeouts, and hits allowed. Okay, June 20th, three innings, one hit, five strikeouts. The 25th, three innings, one strikeout, one hit. The 30th, three innings, one hit, four strikeouts. The 7th of July, one inning, two strikeouts. The 13th of July, two innings, two strikeouts. And last night, two and two-thirds, one hit, three strikeouts. This Urias kid is a weapon. Do the Dodgers trade him? Do they keep him? Do they move him in the closer role? Does he stay as an effector? Either way, keep your eye on Julio Urias. And I agree, Beach Bum. That's what I'm saying. Take the training wheels off. I'm using Beach Bum language now. Take the training wheels off. Give the kid the ball. He can do the job. And I think the Dodgers could win and win with him in that role. But if you're going to do that, you've got to start grooming him now. Not wait for the playoffs to do it. Let's move on. Cubs, Cole Hamels. He's been on the IL since June 29th with a left oblique strain. Took another step Wednesday morning. He had a 24-pitch bullpen session at Wrigley ahead of the game with the Reds. The plan is now two days of rest and treatment. He'll throw off a mound again on Saturday at the earliest. Probably ready for a mid-August call-up. Eloy Jimenez for the White Sox. He left Tuesday night's game against the Royals in the first inning after a collision with center fielder Charlie Tilson chasing a fly ball, placed on the injured list with a right 
ulnar nerve contusion. He'll join the team in Tampa this weekend to continue treatment and be reevaluated next Monday in Chicago. Nathan Eovalde and Mitch Moreland for the Red Sox. And the Red Sox now disagree with me, please, or agree with me, whichever you feel led to do. But the Red Sox are getting to that time of the year where, yeah, it's a little bit panicky. Eovaldi, he's going to be the closer? Look for Eovaldi to start his first stint as a reliever for the Red Sox this weekend when they play Baltimore. Eovaldi will pitch an inning in a minor league rehab game for AAA Paul Tuckett today. This will probably be his last tune-up before being called up this weekend. Moreland, recovering from a right quad injury. Worked out at Fenway yesterday. He's going to be in a rehab game today for Paul Tuckett. He took three at-bats against lefty Brian Johnson yesterday. It was a simulated game. Playing in Paul Tuckett the weekend. Look for Moreland to be activated early next week. Now, Moreland did not so much with the average this year, but he really was hitting power. And Boston could use that at first base. A great glove defensively, not so much fantasy. But from a fantasy perspective, Moreland, a lot of home runs in that bat. And if Eovaldi can catch on to the closing role, that's where Boston has just really imploded this year. That bullpen, that closer situation has been horrible. Horrible. Maybe Eovaldi will be the answer. Jay Bruce, Juan Segura for the Phillies. They're hurt. Bruce exited Tuesday's game in the third inning with a sprained right intercoastal muscle aggravation during a check swing. Bruce said he is optimistic he won't miss more than the required 10 days. He's now on the IL. Segura did not start for a second consecutive game Wednesday because of a bruised left heel. Kapler said it's precautionary. Until he plays, it's day-to-day. Keep your eye on that lineup. Now, Alberto Mondesi for the Royals, that could be a different story. He left Tuesday night's game with the White Sox in the fifth inning after landing hard on a diving attempt for a foul pop. He had an MRI yesterday that revealed a left shoulder subluxation. That is a partial dislocation placed on the 10-day injured list, and he has no timetable. Reading on these injuries, they can take up to three months at times, depending on severity, to recover. So if Alberto Mondesi would be out some extended time, he may be out for the season. The Royals are not saying that. But beware. Chat room. Let's see. Cam disagrees. He thinks it's all about sale. Maybe it is. You know, the thing is, I, I could go with that, Cam. The the sale not pitching like himself has been huge. And maybe it's like feeding off the other. Let's take your point. Let, let's go with it. Sale turns it around, and then Eovaldi clicks too. Now all of a sudden, Boston is a playoff team. So I could go that way. It just seems like, None of the pitching this year for Boston has been good or consistent. The most consistent pitcher they've had probably is David Price, who I was talking about earlier. Erod is inconsistent. A great outing last time. Sale striking out batters but giving up runs. And the bullpen implodes. Maybe if Sale is the leader of that team, again, taking your point, maybe this isn't your point, but here we go. If Sale gets hot, do you think the Red Sox will too? And Beach Bum says he's still waiting for that Boston hot streak. They have that potential. I mean, they're the world champs, guys. As champions of the world of baseball, don't you know they're ready? Look at Byron Buxton and Jonathan Scope for the Twins. Buxton on the seven-day injured list for concussion protocol. He had testing yesterday at Target Field. He was removed from Saturday's game against the Indians after he hit his head on the ground making a diving catch examined over several days before being moved to this list. Because he'd been sidelined for three days with the injury, he could be activated as soon as Sunday if health allows, so they're examining him every day. Scope is day-to-day. He left Tuesday's game after grabbing his left side. 
could be out for just a little while. The Reds, Derek Dietrich and Amir Garrett. I mean, every team's got injuries. 